Welcome to the fourth installment of my competitive team breakdown. If you happen to miss any of the previous episodes, those will be in the description. I went over the Control Warlock, the Grace Warlock, and the Wraith Hunter, and in today's episode we are talking in depth about the Missile Titan and its role on the team. This build is actually one of the most Titan ways to play Destiny. If you follow the lore at all, you'll hear that Titans are like the wall, they're the, the guys that run in stupidly and punch things. That's sort of what you're going to be doing with this Missile Titan. You'll see under Purpose, I wrote Entry slash Shutdown, and what Entry means is that you want to be the first in the door. You want to soften up targets to make your Slayer's jobs that much easier. Next to Entry, I wrote Shutdown, which is regarding its super. Pretty much, you just want to save this super to cancel any enemy super. As for this Titan's loadout, you'll be using a Duke Mark 44 as the primary, a Lord of Wolves as the special, and the Antaeus Wards as an exotic. Feel free to use any power weapon that you want. Let's talk about the Duke. The perk you want on it is Rampage, because with just one stack, you're able to two-tap Guardians. And then for the middle perk, we're going to have Ricochet Rounds, which increases ability and increases range because it increases the zoom of the weapon, on top of the fact that it also lets your bullets ricochet off walls for some questionable cleanups on kills. And for the final perk, we have Opening Shot, which improves accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack. If you pay attention to the background clip, I shoot a shot to disable opening shot, follow up with the 77, then I wait for opening shot to reset, use it, and hit 88. So while this perk does mitigate damage drop off, it also bends bullets to your opponent's face. Even if you aim, like, upper torso, it will somehow give you a headshot. When talking about these sights in the masterwork, you want to go for range to set yourself even farther apart from the popular Ace of Spades hand cannon. And while the mod is personal preference, I like Icarus the best because it significantly improves in air accuracy. Oh, I thought it was sitting back while played. I thought it was Clash. One minute left. The enemy is out of second chance. Nice. One opponent remains. Nice. Let's go over what just happened in the background. So I hit an easy 3-tap to give me my first stack of Rampage, slide again, and hit a 2-tap because of Rampage. Rampage times 2, again, doesn't matter, all I need is one stack, gonna 2-tap him. Then I slide over the ammo for Inertia Override. Here's a normal kill. Keep in mind I only need one headshot and two body shots to secure the kill. Rampage is about to run out, but that doesn't really matter because with the Missile Titan, there's a perk called Inertia Override, where if I slide over ammo, it improves damage. So it allows me to two-tap even without Rampage. Right now I get that the community is a little bit afraid to use 110 RPM hand cannons, and I say don't be. These can be extremely strong if you play around their strengths. Specifically, use range, cover, and aerial space to your advantage. I totally get how most people like to use hand cannons, which is a 1v1 dueling weapon. Well, the Duke is not this. Instead, use the Duke as a team fight helper, or in this specific case, to assist with your entry. By sliding in and putting one shot of 91 into someone's head, that is much more valuable than hitting 70 or 57 to somebody's head. Essentially what you're doing by using the Duke is that you're reducing your overall team's time to kill. Take a look at this background clip and don't blink. You'll miss it if you do. About to be up. These are the kind of scenarios that happen all the time in the Crucible. Someone slides in, gets a shotgun kill, and disengages either with a hunter dodge or with a mouse flick immediately. By using the Duke hand cannon, you're able to assist your team enough to possibly delete somebody before they even have the reaction time to pull the trigger. My advice for a Duke user is to be selfless and think of the team. If you have to 1v1, then I recommend waiting till there's a green ammo brick near you, so that if you slide over it, you proc Inertia Override, which boosts the damage of the hand cannon, which overall reduces the TTK to be competitive with other duelers. Or you just backpedal as fast as you can, knowing that you have superior range compared to other hand cannons. The crazy thing is you can keep your hand cannon lethality, whereas an ace with Memento Mori still can't keep up at 43 meters. The Not Forgotten hand cannon isn't even in the conversation when it comes to these ranges. And that's not even considering the bonuses you'd get if you were standing in a Luna Faction Empowering Rift. I'll talk more about that later in the final overview episode of the series, but for now, let's move on to the Lord of Wolves. Oh, that worked so good. What the fuck, Cam? Join to you. In B. Uh, He's on me. Probably has like full health. He's dead! Uh, that's a yellow at ammo. 
Done ammo. Yeah. I killed him. Nice. Oh my god. I think it's best to describe Lord of Wolves as a shotgun pulse rifle hybrid that shoots a burst of five bullets. You'll find that with perfect aim and tracking, the Lord of Wolves will kill at around 16 and a half meters, which is the exact same distance that the Chaperone will kill with the Roadborne perk active, so that means you have to get another kill with the Chaperone first. In the same way that Roadborne increases the Chaperone effective range, the Release the Wolves perk on the Lord of Wolves makes it so that your next shot skips the burst delay and you just shoot 10 bullets instead of 5. This definitely helps mitigate bad aim if you're afraid of using Lord of Wolves, but don't be. I feel like it's very worth learning to use because of how Release the Wolves can totally shit on supers. Alright, I switched the blade bros, just because he's oh well, that's what the neutral game does. Well, that worked. That's on controller and 30 FPS, by the way. As you can see, even without Inertia Override, the Lord of Wolves still does a pretty good job of shutting down supers, but with Inertia Override, it is one of the most consistent super shutdown strategies in the entire game, even better with a Luna Faction Rift standing nearby. That's body shots. That's ridiculous. Now I know there's going to be that one guy in the comment section saying that a traditional shotgun is better. And yes, if you're going for instant kill at pretty decent range, yes, a traditional shotgun is better. But if you're going for a very lightning fast time to kill at extended, even further than traditional shotgun range, Lord of Wolves is going to be better if you can aim. Let's address the elephant in the room, which is that traditional shotguns will kill instantly, but Lord of Wolves requires target commitment. If you, for instance, told me that traditional shotguns were better for close quarters instant kills versus Lord of Wolves, you'd be right, but you might have forgot about the slidey boots, aka the Entaeus Wards. By sliding, a little shield pops up in front of my guardian that eats any and all damage, extending my life and equalizing the time to kill of the Lord of Wolves and a traditional shotgun. I keep replaying the same background clip because this is honestly perfect. Look at this. Shield goes up and he's dead before the shield even goes down. The best part about the Antaeus words is that if you reflect any sort of projectile, you are granted super energy. You can combine this with a perk on the helmet called Pump Action, which gives additional super energy for shotgun kills. As for the gloves, I opt for Momentum Transfer, which means if I cause damage with a grenade, I get reduced melee cooldown for my Ballistic Slam. This is an ability that lets you leap off the ground like a missile and damage multiple opponents, and if you tag them, you get bonus super energy because of Impact Conversion, another perk on the skill tree. If you want to be particularly cheesy, you can switch to Syntheseps anytime you have the Ballistic Slam up to potentially one bang Guardians. Like how I shot first and then he dies and then I die after. That's awesome. But the kill feeds are mm. you know, reports otherwise. Put a couple shots in patio and then we kill entry. Okay. Oh. Well. Oh. <laughs> a couple. And that's just the melee ability. The super on the other hand is bigger and better. It's called Thunder Crash. Think of yourself as a wire guided missile where if you land, you deal massive damage in a massive radius and also leave aftermath shockwaves in its wake. High Valley just fucking teleported. Oh my gosh, I hit the 15! So if all things go according to plan, you should be sliding into doors, doing damage to opponents, getting extra super energy because of Lord of Wolves kills and projectile reflections. If you're playing well, you might expect to have the second super in the match, which at this case, you might as well just use it to continue pushing the advantage. But majority of the time, what you want to do is use your shutdown super to either outright shut down a super or make it so that nobody else on the enemy team can collect orbs and chain supers even further. And that, my friends, is all she wrote. That's the Missile Titan build. In a future video, I will talk about how all four teammates synergize and play well together, but for now, I'll just end the video by saying that even without Titan skating, keep in mind in this background footage, I'm using high jump of all jumps to get better ballistic slam angles. I think Titans are going to be just fine after the skating nerf. If anything, it'll just separate better Titans from each other. I'm going to go ahead and thank you guys early because this video series has been very fun to make and it started off spontaneous. I just finished my Stormcaller video and I asked you guys to say in the comment section if I should just continue and build an entire team. 
You said yes, and every video since has had glowing reports in the comment section. Thank you so much.